Sanjay Patel, thanks for joining us. We're here up at Women's Training at the Academy. You've been out this for a couple of months now, since the end of last season. How's it all been going? Yeah, really good, actually. Um, we started way back in November. Um, November through to Christmas was more a skill-based stuff, more what the players wanted to work on, what they wanted to improve on from previous years. And obviously, um, come January, we're doing a bit more bat people. So, yeah, been really good. A few changes at the top of the tree, Sanjay. Obviously, Carrie Carswell yeah. was head of women's cricket, has now taken over head of board as director of participation. Yeah. Will that impact upon your role? Does that make any changes for you? Do you take on more or is it much um, the same? Yeah, no, I have to say when she got the job, obviously really pleased for her to get the job. Um, I was slightly nervous thinking, wow, am I going to have to do more? But to be honest, she's still head of women's cricket. Um, she still does loads and my job, has, you know, she leads me to do the coaching, which is great. I'm happy with that, for sure. Good. Sanj, I've been up here filming the women's squad for many a year now. Yeah. And one thing that strikes me about the squad that you've got here and now Looks a lot younger than in previous, certainly in previous years yeah. gone by. Um, how, how's the squad looking? How's the shape of the squad? And is it younger? It just certainly looks it. Um, yeah, certainly we have got some new younger players in that have obviously come through our pathway. Um, so, yeah, no, in terms of how the squad's looking, I think it's looking really strong. It's probably the strongest we've been since I've been in charge. Um, and there's some more competition for places, which is a nice headache to have, but I think we're going to have some headaches come selection, yeah, 100%. That was a good challenge, I guess, picking, yeah. picking that final squad. Um, I know you've been trialling some new players as well over the winter. Where have you managed to get those from? Have any made the cut? And will we see some new fresh talent in the squad this year? Yeah, so, so in September we had uh, three Mondays where we had like an open age, under 18 open age trial, um, where we probably saw 20, 20 players, 20 new players, which is great that, you know, that they, they wanted to come and play. Of which um, we picked five, uh, five that came into the senior. So we invited them for the first block of training from November through to Christmas. Um, we've kept two on, who are, who are now going to practice with us from January through to the summer, and then we'll sort of make a final selection for that um, come March. Yeah. Fantastic. Obviously, the women's game Sanders come on leaps and bounds in recent years since the arrival of the kind of elite regional structure. That, of course, now means you've got some professional players playing both with Sunrisers and also with the Middlesex squad. How beneficial has that been to you as coach, having professionally qualified players who are getting full-time training? How beneficial has that been to you as a coach, having them kind of imparting their wisdom, if you like, on, on the, those younger players? I think um, for us it's been amazing. I don't know about other, other teams, but for us it's been amazing because of the people that they are. So the people that they are are great people. So they have come into the environment um, sharing their knowledge, being open to share advice in terms of their skill base. So it's almost like having a second type of coach or a third type of coach, and they, they can pull, they, our younger players can pull upon their experience and their knowledge. So it's been really beneficial. Um, when they come here, they're just like another player, you know, they don't make any big song and dance about being pro cricketers, they just get on with what they need to get on with, being really accommodating. Have you seen a bit of an upshift in focus from the Middlesex group, obviously? There's now, for the first time in the women's game, mm. a genuine pathway. You, mm. you get into the game as a youngster, you get into the county setup. You've got a genuine pathway there to mm. a professional career in the game for the first time. Have you seen a shift in the attitude of some of your, your own players? Um, I think, we, again, we've been quite lucky. Where we've, we've always been quite professional. We'd like to consider ourselves quite professional. We've always had good outside support from physio support, S&C support, um, and even really almost like minor things like, you know, they always look professional when we walk on the field. Um, in terms of what our, our players aren't players, yeah, there's a direct now. They can see a pathway. But also, it makes them a bit, I think it makes them a bit more accountable for these training sessions because if they're saying to us or to me, they want to be a pro cricketer, well, you know, are you behaving like a pro cricketer? Are you doing the right things? Um, but I have to say, we've always been quite lucky in the sense that they've always committed to practice, committed to getting better on and off the field. So, so it has been beneficial, but we haven't seen massive changes in terms of how you know our behaviours for sure. Quick word on the season ahead Sanj, obviously looking back to last year you breezed through your 2020 group, uh, you were in I guess let's be fair and with all due respect to those opponents, a fairly weak group, some bigger challenges coming up this year and I guess you've got 
I guess the one to look forward to is the, the London derby against Surrey. Yeah. We'll be playing them. I think we've got Kent in the group. Is it yeah. Oxfordshire as well, yeah. the third side? Yeah, no, I think um, it'll be a bigger challenge for sure. Um, where I think the girls will stand up to that challenge. What was really good, like you say, it wasn't the greatest of... Um, the, the strength wasn't um, as strong as we would have liked it. But we made a big shift in the winter to, to try and really play with freedom is, is like freedom and be brave is like almost our mantra now. Yeah. We, we want our players to do that and express themselves. And if they get it wrong, that's fine and we'll back them. Um, so it was actually quite good that they weren't challenged, so they could actually take that run. And, you know, obviously when you're playing against really tough opposition, then we're saying to them, change your mindset about being safe versus effective. You know, they're going to go down the safety route because they don't want to get exposed. But they were able to really express themselves, which hopefully they can then take that into the bigger challenges ahead. Interesting. Last one, Sanj, um, crystal ball time. What are your hopes for the season ahead? Um, hey, you know what? I just we always want to win. We always want to win everything we do. So that's that. We want to keep winning and be successful. But I just want the girls to just keep growing in terms of what they've done in the winter. Can we apply those things into the summer? You know, not it's not just the confinements or the safety of an indoor hall. Where actually, from a batting point of view, if you play a bad shot, you get out. You know what? If you play a bad shot outdoors and you get out, you get out, and we deal with that. So just keep, just mirror what we do here, outdoors really and just keep developing. Absolutely. Yeah. Sanj, you're very best of luck with the year. Ahead. I think we'll probably catch up with you before the season gets underway. So good luck with the winter training before we get to this point. And uh, thanks for having us. Brilliant. Cheers, Flash.